I've showed a bunch of different type of setups. It's not all the setups there are, but I think it's a good foundation and it's most of the fundamental setups that I've gone over. Now, just in review and some things I think to think about, some important concepts and principles. First, it's more important to move your opponent than yourself. By that I mean there are some wrestlers that events a lot of motion and a lot of movement. That means nothing if I don't get my partner or my opponent out of position. For example, if I was competing against Colby and I'm moving around, maybe even popping his head, ducking, a lot of motion back and forth, but I'm not moving him out of position, I'm wasting a lot of energy and I'm also probably opening myself up ultimately with all that movement given that I'm not really controlling my opponent. So it's crucial in setups to think about what you're doing in terms of controlling your opponent. And quite frankly, keeping movement as economical as possible I think is ultimately the way to go. The movements that you do, the setups that I do, I want to be explosive and I want to count but I don't necessarily just want to have a lot of movement for movement's sake. A good wrestler, which Colby is here, is not going to respond to me just moving around a lot. He's just going to keep his position. And then one of those times when I come in, he's going to attack. So again, an important principle is make sure with your setups and your movement that it's ultimately moving your opponent into more favorable position and not simply movement for movement's sake or movement in hopes that your opponent is going to respond. Another thing that's important, keep your elbows in when approaching your opponent. And also, only move up one hand at a time. I never want to approach my opponent and reach up with both hands at a time. I'm tremendously vulnerable. If I'm going to tie up, I'll keep one hand down as I begin my tie up because I have something to then defend against my opponent's attack. And that's really crucial. And that's a mistake a lot of beginner wrestlers tend to make as they tend to be grabbing with both hands up high. When I approach my opponent, I really want to make contact first with one hand while keeping another hand down ready to defend. Or alternatively, ready to attack as well. So it's critical that you don't leave both hands up as you begin to try to make contact with your opponent. It's one hand or the other. I don't think it matters a lot. There are some people that would argue uh, that, it's, that it's, it's better to, to reach up with the rear hand. Some argue it's better to reach up with the hand that's out in front with your uh, lead leg. I don't think ultimately that makes a whole lot of difference. I have greater reach grabbing with my arm that's the same side as my lead leg. But at the same time, I almost feel like I, I'm a little safer if I reach with my rear arm, and that's what I prefer. But I don't think ultimately that makes a whole lot of difference. The key point is one hand at a time when you make contact with your opponent. The other thing is, too, make sure that your elbows are in as you approach your opponent. Again, if you remember, simply to keep your palms facing each other so that you can clap. Not that you need to clap, but just simply that if you wanted to, you could you know your elbows are probably going to be in. And when I say in, it's in this way, and also, too, you don't want them out too far this way. You want them to be relaxed. You want your elbows in here, and you want your arms pretty much to be hanging down. Another important point to remember, particularly as you're thinking of setups to actual attacks, and that is there are many situations where the setup is actually part of the attack and you need to think of it that way as opposed to simply one step that is the setup that's initiated then there's some evaluation that goes on whether or not that setup was effective then some decision upon whether to actually go forward with your attack as we had talked about earlier with some of the setups for example like popping the head or the head rake when I do that I'm lowering my level at the same time as I'm initiating my attack and at that point, I'm going to be blasting in, for example, with my double leg. So it's crucial that you think of the whole thing as simply a chain of movements that's, one, that, that, that's part of one basic goal. For example, when I do my double leg takedown, 
I'm going to head pop, I'm going to blast in, regardless of how successful that head pop was, because I'm not going to wait. I know from experience that I'm likely to get it, but even if I'm not, and this is the point I want to make, I haven't lost anything typically, as long as my attack is powerful and I can move my opponent backwards, even if I can't actually score on him. So I'm gonna move around with Colby. I pop the head here, I come through, and I have it scored, but because of my momentum and my power, because the setup was effective initially, at least to get him off balance a bit, and I powered my way in and didn't dilly-dally or didn't equivocate about how much effort I was going to put in, ultimately, even though he blocked me off, my momentum and my position will get me back up to my feet, ready to go again, maybe ready to attack right away, or perhaps ready simply to, to tie up. But think of your setups, or at least many of them that we went over, in terms of part of the actual movement, so that I'm not simply evaluating head pop, was it effective, okay, it was effective, lower my level and attack, the opportunity is going to be gone. Learn to chain those things together and think of them as part of the entire move.